Alright guys, so the new clan boss coming up is apparently already leaked according to a user on Reddit. We have the post right here in game. We'll go over all this in just a minute, but in case you're wondering what area it is, it is right over here. Now if we go view the Reddit post, we have somebody announcing that the uh, basically in-game announcement is up. And then down here it says, yeah, it's the new Cerberus boss. This was already leaked information. He's got three heads, all with different skills. Whenever any head takes a turn... The other two transform into one of their respective alternative variants. Whenever one of them transforms, it places an unblockable, irremovable block damage buff on all of them and grants an instant turn to the other two heads. Every three turns, it steals all of your team's turn meter and puts all of your skills on cooldown. Obviously, this can't be resisted unless your champions have full six-star awakenings. This plays very good into the whole Kraken-type theme as well because uh, you only have six-star blessings on everybody if you're a Kraken. Um, then we have each head has four different skills. It'll cycle through in each of their variants. Each head also has its own bark counter. Plarium loves counters that reset whenever you blink. When the counter reaches zero, it does an AoE attack and fully heals itself. Characters named Trunda are immune to all of its attacks and effects. This sounds pretty similar to Hydra, to be honest. Trunda, ignoring all the mechanics, just blows everything up. I'm glad they've made the same situation for the new boss as they did with the current Hydra situation. And characters named Shayek, you know, the whole dog Cerberus thing, characters named Shayek permanently get removed from your account if they die in the fight. So we finally have some type of dog interaction with Shayek because when he was released, everybody was saying, hey, there's going to be other dogs coming out. Go for Shayek. And uh, yeah. I guess the uh, kennel's empty or something because we've had no dogs come into the game since the beginning of the game, basically. Unless you consider Tatura a dog. I think it could be argued that he's a dog. He kind of looks like a dog, but I guess he's not a dog. Kind of like a dog lion. He's, a, he's the next closest thing we have to a dog, guys. But up next, the rewards for beating him are the new nine-piece set that gives 100% defense ignore. Ignore stone skin and block damage, plus 40% speed, plus 60% crit damage, and it costs two keys to battle him and 50 energy. I'm surprised it's only 50 energy, honestly. Uh, the whole Kraken theme, I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if it did. But in all reality, that would be an insane boss. It's not going to happen. But let's take a look at what this actually could be. And I want to hear from you guys as well. I think there's actually some pretty cool, I guess, lore stuff. I don't get into raid lore. But just reading through some of these real quickly for this video, they're actually pretty neat. Which actually kind of points to what this boss is probably going to be. So let me take you through this real quick. We have the clan boss section. Actually, before we do this, let's take a look at the video. So the video that they did is right here. The seal has been broken. Let's make sure this is not going to blow out your eardrums. This is the video we're looking at. Clan boss Hydra. And then broken seal. There we go. So we really don't have very much to work off of here at face value. However, when looking over here, the Great Void has some weird, strange tentacle-like things. Everybody, I believe, for a long time was assuming Cthulhu-type boss. Plus this like gold lock thing kind of looks similar to a Cthulhu-type stuff as well. So I googled, go googled, what? I googled Cthulhu the Great Void, just throwing something in there, the Great Void, Cthulhu, and there's actually a film released a while ago called The Void. And guess what? The, I guess, main character, the main thing it's talking about is Cthulhu type, uh, Cthulhu type hero. Also Void Pilot. I don't exactly know what this is from, but there's a lot of seeming Void interactions with Cthulhu. So they're kind of used, I guess, in similar different things. There was a Reddit post about The Void and uh, mentions of Cthulhu, why they're so related. So The Void points to Cthulhu somewhat. But... That's just outside of Ray. Let's take it a step further and see what else could be pointing towards a Cthulhu-type boss. So Raid posted on Twitter, something wicked stirs in the Stormwind Wastes. At first I thought this was a World of Warcraft reference. Brought into being by the malignant will of the Knight's Revenant. Something to keep in mind. Now only the greatest warriors of Teleria band, banded together will have a chance to stop this new threat. Trunda, thankfully, is one of the greatest warriors of Teleria. But if we go over into the Knight's Revenant, You'll start to see some interesting stuff come about. So read the lore information here. Disciples of the death cult of Kaleth, 
the Knights Revenant regularly have their souls forced into the bodies of sacrificial victims to preserve their youth and strength. Some victims are willing, given false promises of immortality of their own, but others are slaves, their souls destroyed for the Knights' gain. So, Kaleth. Interesting name there. I've actually not looked into any of the lore, but look into Kaleth. You can see the lore of the Night Revenants is mentioning Kaleth here. I believe they are somewhat corrupted, like ex Knights soldiers. And to feed back into the whole Cthulhu type stuff, I was thinking in the Night Revenants, is there any champion who even somewhat resembles a Cthulhu tentacles type monster? Well, at first, no, they don't look anything like that until you get to the one champion right here, Fortis. Let's check out the epics. Are there any epics that have tentacles? No. The only the only champion who actually has tentacles, I believe, in the game who has like that kind of look is Kandrafon. But other than that, nobody else does. He he looks like Cthulhu. But if you look at Fortis and you check out his bio or his lore information, it's actually kind of interesting. Now I'm not gonna read all this. I'm not a storyteller, but if you want to come here and read this, it is kind of interesting. I'll read the first part. Even among his fellow Knight Revenants, Fortis is an enigma. Believed to be either a founding member of the cult of Kaleth, or at least one of its first adherents. He is an ancient, baleful presence that seems to occupy a nebulous space at once on the fringes of the cult and within its inner circle. Fortis regularly speaks, and when he does, it feels as though his words echo around directly within the listener's head, rather than first reaching his ears. Their ears. His declarations are heeded and his commands obeyed by all but the most foolish or powerful of the other knights revenant. Now, back in here, we're actually seeing another mention of the word foolish, I believe, right? In the news section, right here. All right, deep into Larry's underbelly. Um, only the true brave or truly foolish would dare venture underground and face the monster that awaits in the void. So, it seems to be a decent chance that if the boss is Cthulhu, or Cthulhu-type creature, it could be related to... Kaleth, or it could be that that uh, cult leader, the cult of Kaleth. So it's kind of interesting having Fortis look like that and point back into point back to him. I don't know if Hegemon or Wurlum or anybody like that has mentions of Kaleth in that Reddit post. Some people mentioned it did. Just scrolling through real quickly. Okay, there is some mentions of it, of course. But basically, when it comes to the boss's looks, does it really matter? I guess not. But it is kind of interesting to actually think about that, in my opinion. But as far as what this is going to entail, let's see what Reddit who always has the best information and opinions. Let's see what Reddit has to say about all this stuff. So, I expect it to be buggy. This is why they effed up Hydra to build hype for this. Man, the rewards better be good, or else they're looking at some serious exodus. More quality of life updates. Now, if only they can fix current clan boss by the looks of the game timer for me, it's finishing 47 minutes late tomorrow. That's because they changed the, um, the timing of the resets. So... I guess he did not read the um, patch notes. Some overtuned boss that can only be beat by max out champions. They wrecked Hydra, so they need a replacement. <laughs> I can't wait to invest time, resources, and money to build the perfect champs for this new boss, only to have that champion nerfed. So, just from those few messages we read, obviously, releasing a new boss, Polarium, right after you <laughs> all but destroy Hydra. Now, in reality, is Hydra that horrible? I mean, it's not great. It's definitely much worse than it was. However... If you would have waited a little while or just not done this, then the new boss would have been received much better. But it seems very weird if you're just like, oh, let's take Demon Allure, for example. Oh, we're just going to um, break all unkillable teams. And oh, here you go. Here's Hydra. Make you feel better. I can guarantee that would not have went over well. And just like this new boss coming out is most likely not going to be more simple than Hydra. I mean, we've had years to figure out Hydra, whereas this new boss, it's going to be fresh. So it's going to take some time to figure it out, which is going to be cool for those of us who like to figure out that kind of stuff. But it's going to be a pain for everybody else who's thinking, why do we got this advanced boss when Hydra has just now went through massive overhauls to get changed? So kind of a weird time to release a new boss after you do so much negative stuff to the current Difficult boss. So a lot of negative community sentiment. So basically this boss needs to be really good when it comes out. When it comes out. Now what's going to make it really good? Well, rewards are the most important thing. If rewards suck, the boss sucks. It doesn't matter how fun the boss is. If the rewards aren't good, nobody's going to want to do the boss. And nobody's just going to do it at all. Now what could be some good rewards? Well, of course, shards could be good. Now when it comes to shards, since this is a higher level boss, ancient shards, probably not going to cut it to be honest. 
voids, primals, and sacreds are probably going to be what we're looking for because if it does require you to be at a higher level, you don't really need that much ancient shards. They're still nice, but we get plenty of them from clan balls, from farming dungeons, and all that kind of stuff. So getting voids, primals, or sacreds will all be good. Honestly, getting primals would be amazing because we just don't have a very good income of primal shards from anywhere in the game. If you're not doing live arena, you're just not really getting primal shards. Now, in addition to that, another resource, another resource that we struggle heavily with, and especially if we start getting primal shards, is mythical skill tomes. I have two mythical champions. I have two mythical champions who are also not fully booked. So Crixia's second form, not fully booked. Makage's second form, uh, it is almost fully booked. So we're missing one book there, and I'm not going to put it into her. But two mythicals, not fully booked. Mythical books are not easy to come by unless you're spending money. Make sure you're finishing all the events. Then you can get some. But even then, they're just difficult to actually come by. I didn't know you could have this set to the second forms for the uh, player clicking thing. Does it stay there? That's actually pretty cool if so. No, it doesn't. Dang. Either way, mythical tomes, shards, those two things, actually, and soul stones. Soul stones, especially higher rarity, difficult to get. It's difficult to get a lot of souls. So soul stones, mythical tomes, and shards are probably going to be a pretty popularly requested thing for this boss. Something I do not want to see personally is another gear set. Now, before we get into the gear set stuff, I do want to mention that if they have a boss like an Hydra, like Mithrala level boss, but for this area, that'd be awesome. I love seeing fragments to work towards a champion. Did I say boss? No. Work towards a champion who is amazing level like Mithrala, like Lydia. And this is awesome stuff that Playroom does. It's not super difficult to get them. You can finish them out in your own time. Everybody will essentially eventually get them and they make a significant difference to your account. So I would love to see a new champion, but what I don't want to see are new gear sets. To be honest, the gear sets in the game have been coming out very quickly and making the old ones irrelevant. I wish they'd go back and just revamp these or like condense them down or do something to them because right now, just like champions being just flooded into us, the gear sets are as well. So the champions used to come out not very frequently at all, but now it's like each patch, it seems like, every fusion cycle, we're getting three more legendary champions on top of the fusion and maybe even a mythical or two, which is just a crazy rate of new champions and you just can't keep up. With gear sets, it's becoming problematic because you have all the gear sets from dungeons that are all but useless. So in the earlier parts of the game, you're going to use them quite a bit. And like starting into Hydra, you'll use them. But as you're doing Curse City, I mean, Savage starts to phase out. All your gear sets start to phase out and you start to move towards, okay, we're just doing the Forge, getting the sets from the Forge, and we're getting sets from Curse City and Doom Tower farming. So your sets aren't even coming from these dungeons. And all these sets are just wasting space and taking up spots. But then you have the issue with, okay, these are the base sets which is quite a bit for a new player, honestly, to come in and see all these sets. Like, I've been trying out some other games recently, and there's like 10, 12 sets maybe, and it seems daunting. This is way more than 12 sets. Look at all these sets. If you're a new player, how do you feel about these sets? I don't even know if I have a piece of gear in every set to actually show every one in the game, but this is just a crazy amount of set, and every one does something different. Some are variable sets. So these bottom ones are set pieces one to nine. So now you got, okay, well now I can mix, mix and match these, which is cool. I like that. I like being able to mix and match, make creative things. But what I don't like is just more filler sets coming in there, more sets being pushed down. I think we have a really good balance of sets. I think, honestly, if they went through and rebalanced some of the sets, that'd be great. Like offense, this attack percentage is useless. The plus 15%, nobody wants that for later game content. And then crit rate plus 12%. They could spice all these up a little bit, make them a little bit better. Or like some of the sets, I've seen somebody mention, actually, this is a possibly decent one, something like Fury. Instead of making it a four-piece, maybe make it a two-piece set. So you get your damage increase just from a two-piece set, and then it's kind of like uh, Zeal, but like an opposite version of Zeal, right? Because Zeal is based on how much champion has versus how much they've lost. Is Fury based on how much, yeah, increases their, as their HP decreases. So Fury is a two-piece set. Or maybe make days. Just delete it. Because <laughs> nobody wants to see this in the game. It does literally nothing for anybody. It is a horrible set. But in reality, we just have so many sets. Please, don't make this boss have a new set. And if it's not going to have a new set, then it's going to be either be dropping gear from other places, which would be cool. I mean, imagine if it dropped like Lethal Gear or if it dropped Merciless and Supersonic or something like that. 
to where you can get more of those pieces. That'd be cool. Have it dropping more of what we already have, but dropping new stuff wouldn't be great. But I kind of expect that to happen. So the clan boss drops Cruel and Immortal. Hydra drops Protection and Stone Skin. And then this will probably drop some tentacle pieces of gear that strips buffs whenever champions attack you or something along those lines because, you know, tentacles, stealing, grabbing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but as far as the, the timing of this boss, the clan boss is daily. Hydra is weekly resets. And this boss, I would assume that it's either going to be daily or weekly. It would be weird for it to be any longer duration. Unless, yeah, I mean, like a, a month-long duration or every other week would just be really weird. Because at that point, you have to start writing a calendar out for yourself. Because you have the clan boss daily, Hydra weekly, Siege every other week. Then we have CVC starting on that. And if you had to throw in the Great Void, you have to think, okay, we have Great Void on the 1st and the 13th of each month. We have Hydra each week. We have Clan Boss here. Okay, I need to work this out with my job, figure out when I can be at the, the Great Void attack, all this kind of stuff. Who knows what's going on? But I do look forward to this boss. I personally, I'm, ex I'm excited to see what's happening. I think that Hydra needs to be fixed, and they need to revert those changes. I'm looking forward to seeing how we can figure out this new boss, see what they have in store for us. And I hope it's going to be awesome. And I hope the rewards are going to be really good as well. I look forward to a new champion. I look forward to some more shards and books. I want it to be something that we look forward to doing and the rewards make sense. I don't want to be basically bombarded with all kinds of new gear that's kind of not good. Because once again, uh, inventory here is something that's in question a lot. 1,500 pieces for me is plenty. But for a lot of players, you save a lot of stuff. And 1,500 pieces of gear is not plenty. I've got a lot of stuff I need to sell, which I'm actually about to do that while ending this video. So guys, thank y'all for watching. I appreciate all of you. Let me know what you think about this. And uh, maybe the boss is going to be the new Cerberus boss with all those requirements that was shown in the Reddit post. Very creative post. I like it. Cerberus would be sick, but I really doubt it would be a Cerberus boss. But either way, thank y'all, and I'll catch you in the next one.